Inspire. Welcome back to Starting Now. I'm your host, Jeff Saris. This is a show where I talk to entrepreneurs and creatives to, re- to reveal the unexpected paths to where they are today. Today is my first repeat guest. We're talking to Jenny Sudo. And the bulk of this episode is about content creation itself and how she's built her platform and everything she's done and all the opportunity that, that she's seen from content creation. And then we also talk about Evaluate and the NFT trader tool that they just launched. So without further ado, my conversation with Jenny Sudo. So we'll, we'll dive into Evaluate Market and everything that's going on there, but I kind of wanted to talk to touch on content creation a little bit because you in yeah. the last year in the NFT space have just oh crushed it. Like <laughs> everything has exploded because like we talked about last time, also you're the first return guest I've ever had on the show. So this is Let's the, go. yeah, this is the first, but and we talked late last time sort of about where you came from and your origin story and building on other platforms around uh, Top Shot and you did makeup and, and different things. That's right. Yeah. So in terms of NFTs, since we last talked, spoke, it has just exploded what you're doing and the videos and the podcast and everything. And you're getting a ton of reach. So I'd love to just sort of touch on on that stuff totally. a little bit to start. Yeah, totally. Um, so maybe just what does the landscape look like for you right now in terms of content creation and what you're doing? Um, in terms of content creation, so I don't I should have watched the old one to see kind of like what was I doing? Um, <laughs> but yeah, my so I have a podcast, the NFT Catcher podcast. We just um reached a hundred episodes uh, a couple weeks ago, and yeah, we've been plugging away since August of 2021, uh, we've we've reached 300,000 downloads of all time, and yeah, just really exciting. Uh, really love my my side hustle of my podcast. Um, you know, twice a week we record, recapping what happened in the NFT space, and then also interviewing guests. Just recently had um, the president and, and founder of DraftKings on, and yeah, it's just been really fun um, talking to people and you know just chopping it up about NFTs. So. That's been fun. And then um, my Twitter, I started doing these NFT weekly update videos on Twitter, which I did them consistently weekly. I literally just yesterday posted a video saying I was going to be taking a break over the holidays. So kind of on hold with that. But those are fun. One minute, you know, uh, brief videos, like seven to 10 different topics, just like quick things on like what's happening in the space. Uh, A lot of people seem to like those a lot. And what else content wise? Uh, also vlogging. Um, yeah, vlogging when I go to NFT events. So I went to VCon and I moderated uh, five different panels over three days, which, man, when they first asked me, I thought it was a joke. I was like, is this real? They're like, yeah, this is real. I'll put you in a group chat with Gary Vee. And I was like, oh, my God. But yeah, and that was just a super crazy fun time. And I, I wanted to remember it all. So I decided I was going to vlog everything and just post these little bite-sized clips on Twitter, um, which, you know, like people really enjoyed. So yeah, that was fun. And, you know, I'll do that again for Miami coming up. But yeah, I love yeah. vlogging things like that. Giving people a glimpse into what the experience is is so valuable. Mm-hmm. And it's like they were doing really well. I saw them pop up. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, how is no one doing this? Like for I this know, space? There's not that many. Yeah, there's not that. And the thing is, I think, too, is that, first of all, I always film everything on my phone and I'm all about things don't have to be perfect. You just have to put it out there. And so a lot of times people that do vlog, you know, they'll kind of it'll take weeks because they're editing it and they're putting together a whole YouTube video and it's kind of a little bit of a longer form thing. Whereas I was just literally putting out one to two minute clips that I would at night, like spend hours just like putting together and, and then posting either same day or next day and just trying to get it out like in real time, which was quite the hustle, but it was fun. It was a fun challenge for myself as well. Um, and I, Oh, I forget how many I did. I want to say I did like 20 vlogs, mm-hmm. like just kind of my whole experience, you know, from from flying first class, like in that first clip to to, to going back home and everything in between. Um, yeah, it was honestly mostly to chronicle my experience so I can remember it all and like look back and be like, oh, that's right. I met that person or, you know, I did that thing and I can see how I'm feeling and like, 
you know, just kind of like my raw, real reactions and experiences. Yeah, it, it's a huge opportunity, I think, for yeah. content creation yeah. in general. It's just, it's totally. always a big opportunity, but especially in Web3, there's not that many successful content creators. And not to diminish mm -hmm. anyone who's doing it, but there actually aren't that many people putting in the effort to consistently yeah. stick with it. Are there any people who you look at and sort of see as like, because I've had Pio on the show in the past and he does oh, nice. so well with Nifty Alpha. Like I really love, like, again, I talked to him right before he started that. And then in the last year, it just exploded and he built something amazing there. And oh, like, awesome. are there any other people that you look to and you're like, oh, I really love what they're doing. It started putting you on the spot. I guess you don't even have to no. answer yeah, you're that. Good. But... No, that's... Um, so I really like looking turning to like uh, video content creators because mm -hmm. that's kind of my passion, which you're right. There's not really that many. And I think it's also because, you know, sometimes people, it, it's like they think that they're not good at it or they, they don't want to do something for free. And it's like, you know, a lot of the times content creators are just doing it because they're passionate and that, and so you really just have to be passionate. But, um, but I like uh, Girl in the Verse. She makes really awesome short form, like one minute videos on Twitter as well. But she covers more like the crypto and Web3, whereas I, I would do more like NFTs. And uh, yeah, I've connected with her and told her, you know, I just, you do an amazing job um, with these videos. And uh, and then also K Money, who, who really blew up. And I remember reaching out when he was like a little bit under 10K followers. And I'm like, I just know you're going to do well because you're consistent. You you're good at this. You you have experience like you, you know, you used to be a content creator in a different niche and, um, you know, keep it up. And yeah, he's really he's really done well. And, you know, now he has his own podcast and and everything. But his his videos, um, I would say he's the number one NFT content creator on as far as views, for sure. But I also love his content. I think, yeah, he does a great job with that. Um, but everybody knows him, you know, and and uh, yeah, he does great. Yeah, I mean, super valuable to to be building a platform too like that. Like you, you've done this in multiple verticals. You have the experience where you can sort of take those skills, move over here, and build a valuable platform of your own, which which you've definitely done in the last uh, year plus, two years, I guess. Um, yeah. How have you looked at content and sort of building your own personal brand? in relation to everything that you do? Because sort of, is Evaluate Market the main thing, would you say, that you do? Yeah, um, yeah, I would say it's the main thing. I mean, it's my, you know, full-time job um, for the last year and a half, but I've always been that person where I need to kind of have multiple things happening for me. And especially if I'm really passionate about an industry, then I just, you know, I'm really involved in the NFT space, you know, I mean, working for a web three company, having the podcast, like doing the vlogs and the, and the videos. And it's just, and collecting obviously too. It's like, it's just kind of my life, but, um, definitely evaluate is my main thing, especially as of recently, since we launched, um, our new live trading tool, uh, which is like the first of its kind. And we're super pumped about it. Um, so it's just been a lot of work there. Um, but yeah, evaluate, evaluate is awesome. I love everyone that I work with and, it's definitely my main bread and butter. I do think that, you know, building my personal brand and doing these other things within the space helps as well. Um, and, and for example, sometimes I'll have meetings with, you know, other, like maybe we're looking to sponsor newsletters or things like that. And, and they'll be like, by the way, I love your content. I've been following you. And it's like, it just, it, it makes, it helps uh, us have a better relationship and, you know, build a better relationship with people when they already know me. Or, you know, it makes it easier to reach out as well and for people to say yes, because it's like, well, they already know me. I've built up, you know, a bit of a name for myself in the space and, you know, at least they know me somewhat or they're already following me. And and so I think it it definitely makes it help. Or it, it makes it easier with my job as head of marketing at Evaluate to kind of do outreach and have meetings and, you know, with people in the space. So, yeah. Yeah, when you're building something, being known, liked, and trusted is so valuable. And it's it's great for you, but also for Evaluate that they have you because having that recognition, having that uh, the face of sorts, because of course there's other people, there's founders and uh, other people who work there, but running marketing, using your skill set of what you're already doing and just sort of bolting it on there a little bit is a huge benefit all the way around. So I really love that. 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm also curious on what you have been up to recently. I gotta. I feel like we need. I need to hear from you as well. <laughs> oh, I don't talk about myself on this. No, God. no, because like the the main thing I do is brand development and helping small business entrepreneurs build uh, profitable businesses like Ultra Lean and everything. So still doing that. That's Spire. That's the the main company. But the podcast and uh, different things like this, I just do for fun. I just enjoy connecting with people. Some of our partners, like I have another podcast called Kidney Stone Diet, where it's with the Kidney Stone Diet, the person who runs that. We do that together. I co-host it with her. And that's part of building that brand and business. And I'm just sort of all over the place, always doing something. Yeah. And like Amara, my girlfriend actually sits in now and she does live production over here. So it's hey, nice. I see a so, hand. Yeah. So it keeps every like all of the um, everything in post. It makes it go so much quicker because like I don't use the shot. I have uh, multiple cameras set up and things. So it's just like turnkey ready to go and pushing it out. So now doing a lot with her, too, because she she has her own platform called Maven, where she's doing this kind of stuff for people, video production, social media, video stuff and everything. So always something going on. It's just yeah. Yeah, it's just fun. I don't know. I just like doing a lot of different things. Like that's starting the podcast. That's part of it. My uh, my general message is like you have to you have to start something and keep going. Like first, the first hardest step is to get started. Second is to mm -hmm. keep going. And yeah. opportunity comes from doing things. And that's like why I wanted to sort of touch on this with you because the more you do, the more opportunity, the more experience, and it just sort of is this cycle that keeps going around. So I think it's super valuable for anyone. And actually. How would you, do you have any idea how you connected with VCon to do the moderation? Because doing like five panels at a major yeah. event like that, um, that's that's a big undertaking and ask. Yeah, it is. And you know what? I, I really did have feelings of like, why me? Why do they want me? Why are they picking me? Like, am I even worthy of this? Like, you know, and, and then I had to remind myself, like, yes, it's, you know, like, I am worthy of this. Like, sometimes you have self-doubts and you kind of, you feel like, you know, you're not good enough or whatever. And it's like, you have to remind yourself that, first of all, everyone's human, like, um, and, and yeah, they picked me for a reason, right? right? So um, just kind of stepping into that, um, I definitely was like, what the heck? This is crazy. But yeah, I so they said I asked them that because I was like, I really need to know, right? <laughs> and they said, um, yeah, through we found you through your podcast. And I don't know, I guess they were keeping their eyes on me. And um yeah, they said through the podcast. So nice. yeah, it just goes to show. I mean, you know, a lot of the opportunities that have come from the podcast have been really just, you know, amazing, life-changing, fun networking things that I didn't think about doing until the opportunity presented itself and um and and yeah it's like i think um i mean i always think of benefits that are not monetizing you know there's always benefits to doing things that aren't just in the way of making money and even with nfts i think a lot of people think about oh well you know let me try to flip this and how much can i sell it for and it's like well what about the opportunities that will present itself you know just from you being a holder or you know, the opportunities that come from you being in the space that aren't monetary. And I, th I think oftentimes people are people overlook that and, and kind of try to focus just on the, the money part of things. But man, there's so much more than than just the money and, you know, all the networking and meeting people and connecting and and, you know, opportunities that come from just being in this space are are big. And, you know, I I always have to remind myself that especially during the bear market where it's like everyone's like freaking out prices are low and it's like you know so it's, it's okay like things will be okay you know mm -hmm. yeah there's a satisfaction to it too i'm sure yeah. for you like in building this and creating and constantly going and not just uh disappearing like so many people have just disappeared it's mm -hmm. really uh disheartening to see that just because yeah. as soon as it wasn't easy just to sort of walk away and or just be like oh i'm waiting for the next bull run and things like that that like we know it's not going to be the same like things are going to keep going right now people are going to build things and ip and platforms like evaluate and different things will emerge because people are here they didn't leave they didn't give up when when times get tough yes exactly yeah and i've seen a lot of companies too like not just people leaving like traders and stuff but companies shutting down 
Um, and, and it's sad and it's really sad to see. And especially if you're like kind of invested in them, you know, maybe you bought NFTs and they're just like, all right, we're done. And, you know, it's like, oh man, that uh, really sucks, um, that they've kind of given up. Right. Um, and obviously everyone has their reasons and stuff, but you're right. Those who build during the bear market, like they will prosper during the bull and, and yeah, at evaluate, we're really working on building tools that, that people that aren't available anywhere else. You know, we're, we're, we're working on, on things that, that other people don't have that we can provide additional value to those that are already here. And so, yeah, right now we launched our, our live trading platform, which there's a lot of offline trading platforms. So you can, you know, kind of propose a trade and then honestly, it's easy to get scammed for offline trading because you can send like some spoof link and, you know, scam, scam people that way. But for live trading, it's, I mean, it's almost impossible uh, because it would be really hard to mimic a whole trade lobby and everything like that. And you can't send like a direct link to a trade lobby. Like anyway, um, live is so much more secure. Um, and it's also fun because it's like you can chat with people. We have a built in um, chat feature so you can like say, hey, what are you looking for? And kind of match up with people. And, you know, even if you don't have friends in the Web3 space, you can just Click start trading now and it'll match you with someone randomly in the lobby that also has similar collections to you. Um, but if you want to trade with a specific friend, like as long as you're both online, you can search for that user and then send them a trade request and they can accept, um, which this is for Flow and Ethereum NFTs. So for Ethereum NFTs, there is going to be a gas fee. One person has to pay the gas fee, you know, for the transaction to happen. And um, the smart through the smart contract that we built, like the assets just get transferred over at the same time once you both sign. Um, and for Flow, it's free. Uh, there's no gas fees or anything on Flow, so it's completely free. Most of our users, we've had about I believe 700 trades so far, and we launched um, a little less than a week ago, or yeah, last Wednesday. So. Um, and yeah, a lot of people have been trading on Flow. This is also huge for like the dapper sports community people because basically for UFC Strike and NFL all day, there's no gifting ability. So you can actually like basically gift through our site, uh, which everyone's super excited about. And also you can trade across platforms as well. So I can trade Top Shot moments for NFL all day moments, for Flow PFPs and um yeah, you can trade anything within the same blockchain. Um, and uh, for ETH trades, you can even add ETH to the trade, like if it's not a fair, you know, trade with the NFTs. Nice. But yeah, we've been building that for the last several months. And, you know, we're, we're super excited about it. And a lot of people have been really receptive to it. And yeah, it's just fun building tools for people that are still here. You know, and it's like, especially if they don't want to spend more money, you know, trading is you know, free. I mean, if you're on flow, it's like, it's free and it's fun and you can chat with people. So, yeah. and it's interesting because it sounds a little bit like a social network as well. Like you said, yeah. you're in the lobby if people are online and you can, you can connect, uh, through that way. That is, it's very interesting. Do you, uh, like where is the user base now? You said 700 trades. Like, do you see a timeline for a point where someone could just step into the lobby, step in the lobby, you know what I mean? Like, does it join the lobby and then have enough people that there could be a great overlap because it feels like early of course you probably will go with the trading partner and be like okay we're going to i want to do this trade this is what we want to do we want to do it securely we're going to go to evaluate um do you sort of see any tipping point or anything or sort of how long before it's just really seeming like a free-for-all like a trading floor yeah i mean so basically when you get matched with somebody you can either click next partner, which sometimes, yeah, I'll be in there and I'm just, I can just get nexted. Like it's like Tinder <laughs> swiping. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess they didn't want to trade with me. Um, and so, yeah, for the people that want to do the the kind of like free for all, just match with someone and, and, you know, maybe they skip you, maybe they don't, um, that's available. And then also like, you know, if you want to search for specific users, a lot of people have also been asking for trading blocks where it's like, oh, here's what I want to trade. And then someone can go in and be like, great, I want to trade with you and kind of um, accept that. But that would be basically um, offline trading. So we'd have to have both online and offline, which uh, we are working on on that because we're like, OK, people want that, too. That would be a good thing to have. 
Um, but yeah, we just kind of released like uh, the beta. We're in the beta version of this trading tool. So this is kind of the first iteration, but we're definitely open to like suggestions and feedback and we want to build it out a lot more and, and make a lot more happen with it. Um, but yeah, so for the trading lobbies, you only match up with one person. You can see how many people are online trading with, with each collection. So it'll tell you to be like 50 top shot users are online and, and 30 flunk, you know, collectors are online. Um, and, and you can try to trade specifically with people with those collections, but yeah, it'll just match you with one person. And, and then, you know, I mean, I guess you could run out of matches if you keep nexting and then, um, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't want to match you with the same person twice. So you have to kind of log out and log back in, in order to rematch with the same people. So gotcha. anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, it's I think it's really interesting. Are there any fees that are taken from the trades or how does that work sort of on uh, evaluate side? Yeah, so right now the tool is free uh, while we're in beta and, you know, we'll, we'll be in beta for a while for this tool. So, yeah, it's free. Um, just want to be providing a valuable tool. I mean, we're, we're venture backed. So, um, yeah, we're, we're not taking any type of fee or cut yet, although... Um, we plan to in the future, although yeah, we don't know when that will be. So yeah, how recent was the venture backing? Um, so we raised twice, and the last raise was oh man, I don't even know when it was. I'm not sure when the last one was, but oh yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, at some point, um, I should probably know when, but I just do not know. It's all I'm always just curious. Year. But yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's always uh, interesting Definitely to see. Definitely when it was easier to raise. Like, for that's sure. That's for sure. Now yeah. it's kind of a little bit harder, especially mm -hmm. since, you know, in the bear market and everything and everyone's being more tight with their funds. Um, and a lot of projects are trying to conserve their resources, you know, which obviously we are too. It's like, um, but it doesn't mean you stop building. Like you still want to keep, you know, creating innovative new things um, during this time. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and this is almost even like a base level type service that who knows where it could expand in the future as NFTs and digital collectibles grow in their own right. You already have this there that if something changes, you just adjust and keep going. So it's really interesting. I like seeing, uh, yeah, seeing how things are built. But yeah, also being free is yeah. super beneficial. Mm -hmm because right. <laughs> um it would be hard right now people aren't buying a lot but then they have to spend like monthly or per transaction additional could be right. could be a harder sell so yeah i mean it sounds really interesting i i'm i have not checked it out yet but i definitely have to have to give it a look yeah yeah and and for eth collections currently we only support projects with over a thousand in uh trading volume thousand eth in trading volume but we do want to lower that threshold because it's kind of especially now during the bear, it excludes a lot of, um, a lot of projects that are maybe a little more recent and, you know, things aren't as crazy as, you know, during the bull market. And there's still a lot of valid projects for, um, you know, with a lot less trading volume, we just wanted to, to make sure we weren't supporting any like scams or any, you know, th there's a lot of scams and stuff on OpenSea. So we wanted to filter that out. Um, but yeah, we're looking to lower the threshold to like 100 ETH in trading volume or something like that mm -hmm. to support a lot more yeah. uh, projects across the board. But yeah, hard to jump right in with that though. Just wide open yeah. because it could be it could be, oh, kind of, yeah. be a mess. So how I are know, you... and then yeah, people are trying to do like a fake board ape for a real one, you know, in yeah. the trading that would be bad. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> that would not be good. Um, how are you feeling just in general about the market, just personally outside of the company? Yeah. Um, uh, so let's see. I mean, honestly, I feel like I, I, I kind of stay busy enough to, to not think about it too much. And I have been through a crypto winter before, but I definitely, you know, have been affected. Like I lost, I lost, uh, money in, in Celsius when, when that went down, I had, you know, thousands in there and poof is gone. So that kind of sucked. Um, and then I, I know a lot of people affected as well. Um, as far as my NFTs, I've always just been a holder. So yeah, it kind of sucks seeing my NFTs decrease in value, but at the end of the day, I'm just a holder anyway. So it doesn't really matter unless I'm trying to sell. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I try to focus on, 
on the good things that are happening. And it is always exciting. There's always, there's always exciting stuff and there's always like crazy stuff happening, which keeps it entertaining. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I try not to focus too much on like the bad of like, Oh man, I could have sold all this for this price and you know, all that kind of stuff that is not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> thoughts. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, people build platforms around all the negativity and, uh, FOMO or whatever, just all the different things that it's just not adding to the space. It's just taking yeah. away, but people look at it and it gets clicks and views and huge Twitter spaces and everything. But it's not like, oh, yeah, it's not good for us just to, as humans to constantly have all that negativity. I don't feel mm-hmm. like, I don't know. So, in terms of content creation, I want to ask one more thing. You built these platforms, they're great platforms, tons of downloads for the podcast, tons of views. Do you have any like strategies or tips or anything that you've uh, used to build the the connections and the network and things? Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, oh man, I would say being co- consistent and also like niche specific with what you're creating. So for example, you know, with the, with the NFT weekly update videos, like when I made the first one, I didn't know if anyone was going to like watch it or if it was going to be received well, um, you know, if the algorithm was going to push it out, but just kind of trying things out if they do well, double down on it and, you know, figure out, okay, what was the style that I used that, that people like try to improve on it a little bit, but create a similar thing. And, um, yeah, so that so that it was like almost a series in a way of of okay, this is the style. And same with the podcast. Um, I mean, I I don't even I don't even know how people started listening to the podcast. I think it was because it was it was pretty early and there weren't too many NFT podcasts, I don't think, at the time. So I think people just kind of started listening and then yeah, just being consistent and and I mean uploading like twice a week. Uh has been beneficial, but also, um, adapting, like, you know, you'll learn things as you go and, and you'll kind of figure things out along the way and, and you'll end up, you know, being like, Oh, it it would be better if I did this and, and finding ways to improve, you know, constantly thinking about how you can improve once you kind of stop improving or growing. And, you know, you're feeling like you're just kind of, coasting it can be a bit boring at least for me and you know sometimes I feel like giving up I'm like oh I don't want to record today I don't want to do this I don't want to do that and it's like I do have to force myself like you don't always want to do the things that you're that you enjoy like sometimes you just don't want to do it um and but you have to push through those times um you know especially if your goal is to you know, whatever your goal is, your goal, oh, I want to make it to two years or hundred downloads or I don't know, whatever, hundred episodes. Um, what is you your know, goal? You keep pushing. Do you have any <laughs> specific goals for what you're doing? Yeah. Um, so oh, honestly, one of my, I mean, my goals are always kind of changing. Like I'll, I'll have goals and then I'll hit it and then I'll be like, okay, what now? Like for the podcast, it was like hundred episodes. That sounds fun. And then it's like, or, you know, having certain guests on, then you have those guests on and then it's like, oh, well, what now? And then, you know, I have to kind of think of new things. Otherwise, I'm I, I feel kind of like burnt out or get bored. Um, but yeah, for the podcast, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Honestly, I'm trying to figure out what the next goal is. Um, and I'm, you know, talking with my co-host and producer and it's like, you know, we're, we're entertaining the thought of maybe doing you know, a Twitter space for an episode or a a live stream, you know, once a week type of like a new thing to introduce. Um, But I don't know yet. And yeah, in the meantime, I'm kind of, you know, it's around the holidays, not feeling super motivated to, to record. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely in that time where I'm like, I need to figure out a new motivation for myself, um, and a new goal for myself. uh, Because yeah, I'm just like, I'm wanting to just kind of do nothing, but I don't ultimately want to do nothing. I want to keep uh-huh. going. So yeah, there's that push and pull. Like you, you yeah. know, you want to keep going, but do you really want to keep going? Do you have <laughs> any like uh, tactics that you've used to get yourself to go? Like, do you use any sort of like checklist or schedules or anything that mm. that gets you over that hurdle? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Google Calendar. 
all the way. Like if it's in my calendar, I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it. And I just remember learning, like when you think about something, you have to do it. And so I, I'm definitely, I've definitely gotten better with my time with focusing and, you know, working and being productive uh, because it can be easy to get distracted especially when you have all these, you know, different things that get distracted by and Twitter and social media and everything. Um, But yeah. And then also, you know, for certain things, it's like, I have people relying on me, you know, I, I can't let other people down that that's also a thing too. I'm like, I don't want to let them down. um, You know, and, and so that also motivates me to like do the thing that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be accountable to someone else. It's hard when it comes to ourselves. That's how I am with like partners and clients and things. That's always done. All of our stuff just gets pushed to the side. And it's like, oh, one day I'll finish (laughs) this. One day I'll push it further. Like I have things that are 90% complete products and different uh, service-based things that we would offer that I'm like, I just need to push it across the finish line. But I'm like, no, I'll I'll work on this. I'll do this. It's just so hard. It's hard to have that internal motivation when it comes to to our own stuff, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. You feel more, oh, someone else is counting on me. And then you're like more motivated to do it. Whereas, oh, it's just me counting on me. You know, uh-huh. I can let myself slide and let myself go and, and not finish that thing. Um, yeah, it can definitely be challenging. Yeah, for sure. So I think this is great. Like, I really love touching on all the different content creation and then diving into Evaluate. Was there anything else about Evaluate that you wanted to share that you didn't get to touch on? Um, I mean, yeah, I mostly just want to talk about the trading tool. But we're also, you can also um, track your portfolio value, shop across marketplaces. We still have all our other functionalities, but but right now we're really trying to, um, you know, get people to to test out our new trading uh tool so yeah yeah. and what's next for you personally after the holidays (sighs) is there is there anything on the horizon that you're thinking about yeah i am moving again um in february so moving states (laughs) so i'm thinking about where to move and thinking about my next journey and um you know thinking about what what am i going to make my new year's resolution (laughs) um do you normally do one yeah I always do it and I, I I usually try to stick to them like for as long as possible. Like I've done um only listening to podcasts when I drive, which I did for like eight months until I got into a car accident and then I didn't have a car and then okay, end of end of that resolution. But that was an interesting one. And then um uh my last one actually was to allow like to like let love into my life because sometimes I can be very guarded and you know just kind of I don't know you have these walls up you have these shields and you know you you don't want to feel vulnerable you don't want to get hurt right so um yeah last year was like to let love into my life and um yeah shortly after that um my boyfriend and I currently we we started dating and and it's like, you know, now, now I'm living with him and yeah, it's great. But it was like, ah, uh, sometimes my New Year's resolutions are more, I don't know. I always make them something that I'm like, okay, what's my mission for the year? What do I really want to do with the podcast in the car? It was about like trying to learn more and mostly it was about cryptocurrency. That was in like 2017 and I was trying to learn more about crypto and I was like, how do I get myself to do that? I don't want to spend my free time. So it's like, how about when I'm driving? I, I, I just listen to music. I might as well listen to a podcast, you know? So things that I can easily change, but would have a, a profound impact in my life. Yeah, sort of like that would. 1% better every day. Just little incremental oh, steps, yeah. but it compounds throughout the year. So it's, yeah, yeah. usually valuable direction, direction to take it. So yeah, thanks so much for taking the time and diving into everything and evaluate does sound very interesting like having it having the social aspect of it i find uh sort of unexpected because i hadn't looked into it i wanted to sort of talk about it first just fresh but yeah yeah, that's an interesting part of the equation that i didn't really consider before yeah it's fun i'm like sometimes when i'm bored i'm just like matching up with people like hey how's your day going you know (laughs) just chatting 
and you know just getting to know people and you also get to know about their collection because you can see all their nfts and so it's like you can learn about oh when did you start collecting this and it's fun it's fun to be able to make new friends um and yeah through way of like their nft collection and stuff i just yeah it's it's very fun the social aspect is definitely my favorite my favorite part of it oh and are you monetizing your podcast or any of your content stuff um so i we did um maybe a, a month or so ago open up um you know the possibility of okay people can you know, we're accepting sponsors now, which we kind of weren't ever before. I didn't really want to monetize. Um, but now we're like accepting sponsors. And we've had a couple um, companies sponsor our podcast episodes. Um, so that has been cool. But I don't know, I haven't really, I don't really do anything to get sponsors right now. So it's kind of like, if they reach out and you know, they seem good, then yeah. But yeah, How have I mean, you negotiated? I would like to have... How have you negotiated those terms? Because I feel like mm -hmm. that's always the like, black yeah. box of all that stuff like what what's fair yeah. and uh how does right. that work out? what's fair yeah mm -hmm. i mean what i like to do is and and this is exactly what i did with tiktok too like when i started monetizing i was like how well i know how do i know how much to charge and you know but um w well we, we kind of so me and michael are my co-host um we just kind of talked about okay what is fair what do we think is fair and then let's start out low and you know do a do a sponsor do a sponsored episode with something that we think is okay we would want to charge a little more than this but let's start it at this price and then you know once they say yes cool next person that comes along you know uh, uh say the price is a hundred dollars more and then if they say yes with no friction great next person that comes along say it's a hundred dollars more they they say yes with no friction um, and just kind of, and then, okay, this seems like a comfortable price point. Um, and yeah, I remember with TikTok, I would do that too. I'd be like 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. And then it was like, then it started being some friction where people would try to negotiate and be like, okay, well, can we do two for this much, you know, and kind of have a deal, mm -hmm. some type of deal. And I'm like, okay, that's how I know that this is the good price point. Cause you know, if people are just keep saying yes, then I'm just going to keep raising the price. And, um, until someone kind of objects. And he's like, um, actually, can you do it for this? Um, and just seeing w w what that is and if that's good. So we haven't done like longer term partnerships, though. I would like to have like a longer term partnership where it's like, you know, a couple months or something. And it's not just like a one off. Mm -hmm. You can definitely charge more for a one off, which is nice. But um, and then obviously we set our own terms. So for me, I wanted it to seem kind of like organic. Um with a sponsor, obviously you have to say, oh, this is sponsored by, right? But I wanted it to be kind of like a, almost like another update on, you know, what's happening in the space, but it's just a chunk about, you know, whatever company is sponsoring. So we decided to do two minutes talking about the company. And then, you know, if they had suggestions on, you know, key points for us to hit, they can let us know. And then one link in the show notes. So it can be their website, their Twitter, whatever. And yeah, that was the terms. Like I didn't, I didn't do a whole, put together a whole media kit or anything like that. Just kind of, um, when people will reach out and be like, okay, look, here it is. This is what it is. And then, yeah, they, they kind of say yes or no. So. Well, yeah, simple is the way to go because you don't have yeah. to overthink at all, especially when there is the opportunity. You just test the waters yeah. and grow from there. I want to thank Jenny for joining me on this episode. You can find uh, Jenny from the blockchain on Twitter and her NFT catcher pod and also uh, evaluate. I think it's evaluate XYZ. I should probably know that going in, shouldn't I? Before I say, I think. Ugh. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. But yeah, you'll find all the links in uh, the show notes. But have you ever had a New Year's resolution? Me? Yeah. I was like, I saw I... you were about to speak <laughs> and I'm like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't really do New Year's resolutions. Have you ever done one? I don't think so. You know why though? Because you're the best. What can I say? Ugh. You know everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, anyway. Maven by Amara. Mavenbyamara.com. That's me. My mic's over here now, so I can stare into your soul. Yeah, I think that's good. And then you can look at me on the screen. Yep. But yeah, anyway. So we're just, uh, what are we doing? 
Anyway, thanks for tuning in. This has been started now. I'm Jeff Saris. This is Amara Andrew. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. See ya.